Hey, welcome back. Hope you watched our first video from this week's uh, two-part segment. And I hope you like the two-part thing. I don't know if I like this yet or not, when we break it up like five to seven minutes a piece. Um, but I don't like watching long videos, so I figured I probably shouldn't make long videos anymore. But either way, we're going to look at verses 9 through 21 of Romans chapter 12. Paul's been talking about what the church is supposed to look like and how we're supposed to be as Christians if we have surrendered everything and given ourselves as a sacrifice uh, to God to be used in whatever capacity. Now, in these verses that I just mentioned, there are almost 30 things that we are supposed to do or not to do. And I'm not going to take the time to read them all because they're, they're kind of common sense things. But when you look at them, just a few at the beginning, it says in verse 9, Let love be genuine. Abhor or just hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. And then he goes on in verse 14, and it kind of continues this list of, of what the church is supposed to look like. You'll find things that um, kind of reflect what Jesus had said from the, from the book of Luke and the book of Matthew, how we're supposed to love our enemies and hate and, 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 and love and, and do good things to those who hate us and, and that curse us. We're not supposed to repay people for evil. Um, we're supposed to leave vengeance to God. If your enemy's hungry, feed him, that sort of stuff. And he ends in verse 21 with, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, um, these things kind of define what a Christian does. So if you are truly a follower of Christ, you want to be part of, of Christ's church, these are the things that have to define your life and that consequently will define the rest of your church. In this list, you're not going to find anything about uh, you shouldn't wear these kinds of clothes or you shouldn't listen to that kind of music or you shouldn't, uh, I don't know, eat this or, or not eat that. You're not going to find any of those types of rules. What you're going to find here in, in this section of scripture is how our life is supposed to reflect the grace and mercy of God. And, and how we are supposed to extend those attitudes towards everyone around us. And so you need the Spirit of God to help you with these things. And, and truly, this is what living in God's kingdom looks like. When you truly love people out of a genuine heart, not because you feel like you have to, right? And there's people in your life you have to love, right? Like your, your weird grandma who smells funky and always like squeezes your face too hard. Um, I don't know, uh, a, an odd friend on your block that you've just been friends with since you were a little kid and you feel like you just have to love them because nobody else will. Um, this is different than that. This is a love because you want it. You want to care about other people. Um, this is not a list so that you can look at other people in the church and say, wow, that person doesn't do this, they don't do this, they don't do that, or so-and-so at church mistreated me, or my church is this. This is not a list for you to compare what the church is currently and say, wow, they all suck. This is a list for you to look at for yourself, for me to look at for myself and say, do these things show up in my life? Do I actually have brotherly affection or just brotherly love for people? Do I actually work to show honor to other people? Am I... Um, the, the Bible uses the term uh, zeal or, or zealous. When, you, when it refers to someone as a zealot in the, in the New Testament, it literally meant someone who was a terrorist. So if you think about that level, when you think of zeal or zealousness, kind of they're, they're crazy uh, passionate about something. Um, and, and, and he mentions that here, like, am I serving the Lord with the right heart attitude? Is my spirit where it needs to be? Am I patient when trouble, like difficult times come? Um, all those things, are those things that, that are happening in my life? And if they aren't, then, then there's a problem there. And, and maybe I'm not following Christ as well as I should be. If those things aren't indicative in your life, then maybe you aren't following Christ as well as you should be. Now, again, these aren't something you like wake up one, one morning and say, okay, I'm just going to be perfect at all these. No, you need the spirit of God to help you do this. And he will do that. You just have to surrender, give yourself as a sacrifice that we've been talking about so far. Um, if we truly are a follower of Christ, these things are going to become normal for us. We're going to just naturally begin to start thinking this way. But we have to train ourselves in that. And so um, genuine love for others, a refusal to exact vengeance on personal issues is supposed to be the mark of the church. We are cool with things even not going well because we trust that God has got them handled. And that will be the, the clearest indicator of Christ's likeness. And so the point I really wanted to get across today is this idea of letting love be genuine. Letting the idea that, that we truly, deeply care about other people influence us. So if Christ has done all of this for us and God has made a way for us to live in harmony with him, some things are going to change in our lives. Um, 
I think the first of those is simply how we deal with all of the people around us. And that will start with people that are closest to you, namely your family that you live with. And I would hope your church family is pretty close there. Um, you can't live in a bubble all by yourself and accomplish the will of Christ. It doesn't work that way. And so if you're afraid uh, of how people talk to you or, um, or you're afraid of how to talk to people or work this, you've got to simply start by loving them and let this passage of Scripture guide your questions. In other words, if you don't really know what to do, you just want more than what you have right now when it comes to spiritual things, this is a great place to start. This is where we say, okay, I believe in Jesus. Jesus loved me. How can I love someone else? Well, here's a list of how to do that. So I encourage you to read this on your own time. It's Romans chapter 12. Uh, read the whole chapter, but if you want specifically this section for this video, it's verses 9 through 21. It's not that long. It's this much in my Bible. It's that much. And the whole thing is just chock full of, of great stuff. But let love be genuine. That's the root of all of this because that reflects what God is. It reflects how God has treated you and me. And that will be the biggest thing you can do to impact someone's life for the gospel. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time.